want everybody here to know, this is not the end. This is the beginning. It was the best feeling in the world to know that 12 months of frustration, 12 months of preparation were paying off right in front of us. We really did have to take it one game at a time because the SEC that year was an absolute gauntlet. We were so good at focusing on what we had to do that week. You know, that's Saban's thing. You don't focus on the horizon. You don't focus on the end goal. You focus on what you have to do to get there. But there was never a doubt that it would be Florida. We had pictures of them everywhere. We had pictures of them holding SEC signs with you know, confetti coming down. It was the game that we had envisioned since we lost versus them in 08. That was our motivation, that failure. And when we get tired or when we were like running sprints or lifting, like it was all like, what we got to do to be better than Florida? What we got to do to um, get back to that position where we can redeem ourselves again? And we wanted them. I mean, that was, that was what we worked every day for. They were in the middle of a dynasty. It would have been a complete letdown to play anybody else in that SEC championship. I have never felt better going into a game. I knew our plan was sound. We had a great week of practice. We had focused all off season on what we were going to do. And I knew we were going to go out there and play our best game of the season. When we got to that day, that game, I remember the emotions were high in the locker room. Multiple guys were emotional before the game. Like, you know, it meant a lot to us. It was exactly like the year before in terms of lead up because it was more or less a, a national semifinal when we didn't have the playoff. But uh, y you could tell sort of a shift in the, f the feeling of who Alabama was nationally and certainly the feel of, of what Alabama was to, to its fan base because the success of Saban had kind of sunk in. You know, a loss wasn't acceptable at that point. I wasn't just you know, feeling like Alabama was so much better than everybody else. But I do remember thinking that it's going to be hard to beat Nick twice in that same game. I mean, this, this was the moment where the whole country just stopped and took a deep breath and, and watched the SEC. Uh, there's never been two championship games like that. Alabama had a lot of good players with a lot of good memories, meaning they remembered what happened the year before. And I remember thinking to myself, them going into this game, if Florida's going to win this one, they're going to have to bring their lunch. I was supremely confident. The first play as we came out of the game, we had Julio in the slot, which was the first time he'd been in the slot all year. He runs an over route, kind of held up for a second, moved to my right just a touch, and then threw it to Julio over the top, and he had created like a mile's worth of separation between him and their best corner. Like, that's it, we got him. Ted Roof's defense at Auburn, like I said, had a, lot, had a lot of success the week before. And as much success as they had, you knew that Florida would probably do something very similar, right? Like, how can you not? And sure enough, what we practiced came out perfectly. Defense collapses, they go to five down linemen, and Mark Ingram punches one in from about eight or 10 yards out. I felt like everything we did worked. I mean, it really was like a, you know, you come out for this, what you think is going to be a fist fight, and really it felt like we landed haymaker after haymaker. Sometimes when you start the game well offensively, I feel like we'd exhale, like, whew, man, good. All right, we're off and running. Let's go. But with Florida, I remember the mentality always being like, that's not enough. It's not enough. we got to go get more. Because that guy on the other side and that team on the other side, they're not going to go quietly. Even though you knew Alabama was ascending, you weren't sure. It was still Tim Tebow. It was still Florida. I just remember going into that game just on a personal level. I, I, I did not like Tim Tebow. I didn't like him at all. I think it's pretty clear that uh, at that point I was very aware of who Alabama prioritized in recruiting. Um, I didn't like all the accolades that he got, and I wanted a shot at him on a personal level, I did. And I was really, really excited to see that week that the narrative was the only difference between Alabama and Florida was the quarterback. I'm not saying he wasn't a better college player than me, I know that, I'm not, not that dumb. But I also know that it was particularly satisfying playing well and doing some things that, that he did 
throughout the course of his college career that made him so special, it was fun to do some of those things myself. And again the blitz. McElroy rolling out. Tries to dance down the sidelines. Did he do so? Yes, he did. Wow! A Barishnikov! It's funny because there's a fourth quarter drill that we do throughout the fourth quarter program where you quite literally hop on one leg for like 15 yards. And Coach Cochran, he's like, hey, yeah, 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 wait, we, hey, I, I told you you were gonna use it. I, like, all right, Coach, I get it, man. Like, like, that was clearly self-preservation right there at its finest. And frankly, me ending up on one leg was more because I, I just couldn't quite keep both feet on the ground. And just looking back on it, I was like, I can't believe I was able to do that. Like, it's like, like, who was that guy? Like, it was just, it was just such a mentality of, and whatever it takes in this game. I think the biggest play for me, we ran a sort of trick play where Greg kind of half rolls right and he sets up camp and looks back to the other side of the field. Like Greg threw a ball over Peek's head and Peek ended up catching it like this. It was on the front of Sports Illustrated, just like this. And it was just like, I can't believe that just worked. <laughs> you know, like, there's the, the number one defense in the country uh, and somehow that just worked. There were so many times where they could have climbed back into it, and against worse teams, they would have. But that team was uniquely special with the intangibles that we had and how much we cared about each other and, and how much we had put into that game is that we just wouldn't have it. As good as Tebow was of a quarterback, Rolando McLean was that good of a linebacker, and just everything they did, it seemed like we had an answer for. And we just, we had a ton of success. Um, doing the things that we were good at, which was running the football and keeping it away from them. How about the night for Greg McElroy? How about the loss for Tim Tebow? There's always something fun about kneeling on the football. Like kneeling on the football is the best. You could see like your kid from Texas got here and got revenge against Florida in his first year as a starting quarterback. And um, you could kind of tell that he kind of knew that this was the place where he was supposed to be. I think the realization of that win was, was, was this, that Urban Meyer was no longer the king, that Nick Saban was, and what would happen in the future. And it didn't take long to settle that debate. That was a great feeling for us, and I feel like throughout my whole career, even though I won a national championship, that was the biggest win that we had at Alabama. This is the one you have fought for forever. I mean, it, and it's your favorite football game. It's my favorite football game I've ever played in. <laughs> we felt like we were on top of the world. I mean, we really did. It was just so gratifying, and, and to see the happiness with Coach at that point, you know, he was not a guy that showed a lot of personality you know, to that point. <laughs> he would occasionally smile, but that was for the camera and that was about it. But to see him genuinely happy was something I, I, I wouldn't forget as well. I mean, he was genuinely happy, genuinely proud of us, and it was worth it. Like, the last 11 months, 12 months were hell, but man, they were worth it. Like, because this feeling of elation will never be able to be replicated. Like, we can win in a couple weeks, but it, it wasn't going to be the same because we never made it about the team we were going to play. We made it about the team that we just beat, and, and that was by far the most gratifying feeling that I can recall as a player. In the closest race ever, the 2009 Heisman Trophy is awarded to Mark Ingram of the University of Alabama. The Heisman, when I got to Alabama, was not something that happened. And there we were, had just beaten the reigning national champs, and Mark Ingram had won the Heisman. I just remember thinking, I never in a million years thought this would happen in my life. It's like crazy that they never had a Heisman Trophy winner out of all the All-Americans they've had and all the championships. To be able to do that, uh, it was a blessing, and I couldn't have did it without uh, the support of many people. There was this special bond between him and us. In his speech, he thanks his offensive line, you know, thank you to my offensive line. And I, I cried, like I teared up and cried. I feel like that award was, you know, I won it, but a lot of people had their hands in it. To be able to fill that trophy case for um, the Alabama legacy and all the Alabama fans and my family and my teammates, my coaches, to be able to do that, that was wild. Being in college and winning those championships and winning those awards with my guys. And um, those are moments I'll cherish the rest of my life.
to be honest with you, I think it took us probably a solid week or two to where we really felt that drive to, to go back and compete. We knew the importance of the game because it was a national championship. That's essentially what we wanted. Um, but beating Florida, I, like I said, I feel like that was our biggest win. It's so funny because Coach made us watch the movie Miracle uh, before the game because the U.S. beat the Soviets in the semifinal game, not in the championship. So, like, <laughs> he had to kind of, like, we, we kind of won the Super Bowl against Florida. You know, we just had to make sure that we stayed on point because we were so excited coming off of a big win. Anytime that you come off a big win like that, you gotta be, you gotta be aware of not having a, a letdown. All of a sudden it was full go. I, you know, we, it didn't matter that it was Christmas, didn't matter <laughs> New Year's, none of it mattered. I mean, it was all about football and I don't think we felt stressed. I think we just felt like this is this is you know our destiny. Like we're going to be able to do this. I mean, this was this was an, an epic confrontation of of not only two of the biggest names in college football, but but two of the loudest fan bases. And it was at the Rose Bowl. Covered a lot of college football, but I don't remember a game that I was more excited about. I mean, this was really one of these defining moments in in, in time and. The game lived up to it. You look down at this beautiful scene here in Pasadena. Two unbeaten, ready to battle for the heavyweight championship of college football. Mentally, physically, I mean, literally, I had prepared my entire life for that. And I just felt like we could not possibly be in a better position to do this than we are right now with the group of guys we have. And everything that you had prepared for, everything that you expected the game to look like, went by the wayside as soon as Colt went down. Now the option look, and Colt McCoy bangs into an offensive lineman. Colt is hurt. I thought it could have been a classic national championship game had Colt still been playing and healthy. Uh, but you know what? That's football, right? We also weren't sure exactly whether or not he was going to be coming back. But when he wasn't on the sideline, everyone was kind of like, all right, well, we're going ultra conservative. And I can remember vividly having that conversation, like when it shifts from, hey, we're going to be aggressive, we got to go out there and we got to match him to, hey, we have an advantage in the trenches if we're not going to throw it unless we have to. There's no need to. So like the game was kind of transitioning right into where our strengths lie. And I remember feeling pretty excited about celebrating that thing. He dashes into the touchdown and gets one for Dad. And up Richardson bolts up the middle for the end zone. This could be a touchdown. Put it on the board for Bama. Picked up by Darius. Darius in the air. Darius going for the end zone. That's an interception and a touchdown, 24-6. Marcel Darius. Once we scored before halftime, you go in the locker room, it's raucous. You know, everybody's just losing their minds. Like, we just scored a touchdown. We're up by two touchdowns in the national title game. I remember everyone in the locker room being like, dude, how big? Like, this is so great. Like, and of course, coach is trying to rally us, but you know, we're 21 years old. <laughs> We're celebrating already. I, as a, as a captain, as a, you know, a guy who wanted to be a leader, it's like, okay, how do I put a lid on this? I'm like, hey, this game is only halfway over. Gilbert got a man open! Touchdown, Texas! A freshman growing up before your eyes. 28 more yards. Late in the game, you know, Garrett Gilbert had done, you know, his thing and, you know, it wasn't necessarily out of reach. And I remember thinking, I think the Texas was down three and got the ball back. I remember thinking, holy crap. A high, beautiful punt. Shipley will have to go for the fair catch at the seven yard line. We felt good about our playing of the field position game at that point. I knew we were gonna get aggressive defensively and that's when Eric Anders came off the right side. Gilbert fumble. Ball's loose. Bama's got it. Upshaw falls on it, and we're running on the field going, we can score a touchdown right here on, you know, from the three-yard line. We should be able to put it away. When you're in it and you're going through the gauntlet of the season, 
It's like, forget everybody else. All that matters is these 125 guys and the coaches. And when we got done, I do remember there being that shift. And it's like, man, we didn't do this just for us. Like, we did this for the state. I must have hugged everybody in the dang football building. I hugged, you know, Coach Saban and Greg and all my linemen, and they hand Coach Saban the crystal ball. And I don't know if it ever made it on the telecast, but I looked at Rolando and Mark, and I was like, you know, you won the Buckus Award, you won the Heisman, like, how about y'all let me get this ball first? Like, how about y'all let me kiss it first? And <laughs> Rolando goes, give it to Mike, Coach, give it to Mike. Give it to Mike, and he just watches it cross his face with his eyeballs, and he puts it down into my, you know, Coach Saban puts it down in my hands, and I just smooched it. And I was like, this is the greatest day ever. It was awesome bringing it back to the Crystal Ball and National Championship back to Tuscaloosa. I remember when we pulled in, uh, you know, driving down the strip in Tuscaloosa, there was people everywhere. At the airport, people were everywhere. Just going to class, the students were, you know, they loved it, the teachers, the uh, whole campus was just on fire. The feeling was that this was the team that had staying power. You knew they were going to be back next year and the year after, and they would just start racking them up at that point. But I want everybody here to know, this is not the end. This is the beginning. It was the beginning of, I'll say today, the greatest accomplishment in the history of college football and what he's been able to do with these five national championships. At some point, it just became second nature to us to outwork everybody. It was just an incredible, incredible group of guys that weren't all five stars. Like, we weren't all even four stars. A lot of us were three stars, but we bought in. I mean, that's something that does not happen just by recruiting or by coaching or by just you know winning football games. You have to instill that. To see them go on and have even more success over the last decade now has been remarkable. I don't know that it'll ever really hit me. You know, it's just 10 year reunion's gonna be pretty emotional. Um, seeing a lot of guys I haven't seen in a long time. We did a lot of special things with, I think we'll probably hammer it home a lot more than it ever has been. There's something about that group and the nucleus that was created within that group and the chip that was on that group's shoulder and just how close we became over the course of a 14-game of a season that even if you've lost touch with guys, you're still so proud of, of what they're doing in the world. And you're proud that we were able to share you know, those couple years together and specifically the 2009 season together. Thanks, Corals. Here for you since 1920. So I was out on the field and I remember turning around and saw the, I guess you can call it a Gatorade shower. Uh, you know, a couple of the guys tried to shower Coach Saban with Gatorade, ended up hitting him in the head, you know, like, and ended up hitting him in the side of the head. I mean, that wasn't just Gatorade, that was some plastic. We're, we're coming after I mean, this, this is guy. getting a little physical here, boys. We've had enough of his rules. We, we, Bang! We on that left ear field. We Woo! rule right now. And I actually talked to Coach Saban about it the next day we were in the plane. I was like, what happened on the Gatorade shower? He's like, they knock, about knocked me out. Uh, but I remember watching that on the sideline and I thought, that just happened.